Hello everyone, this is the Jimmy and Mike Show on ESPN Radio. Just a reminder to call in, you please use the number 1-800-888-8888. To start today, we're going to talk about the All-Star Game. Obviously, we had the Home Run Derby last night with Aaron Judge winning. Mike, I'll start with you. What are your predictions for tonight's game? I think the AL will win this. I think it'll be a close game, but I think the AL will prevail because I think they had better pitching than the NL. I mean, the NL has Scherzer and some other guys like Wood. Kershaw can not be available because he pitched on Sunday, which is a huge uh, deduction from the team. But right. the AL has Vargas, who's been surprising, Erwin Santana, Sale. I think they'll just prevail like 3-1 to one or 2-1 to one or something. Yeah, it's interesting. I do agree with you. It's going to be a low-scoring game. We've got all the pitching. Sale and Scherzer starting for both sides. I kind of want to see Aaron Judge against Max Scherzer just once, just to see what that would be like. Uh, actually, I'm actually going to go with the National League. I like their pitching as well. I mean, both sides have an excellent pitching, but I like the NL's lineup just a bit better from top to bottom. I know the NL's got guys like Judge and so forth, but I like the balance that the NL has in their lineup as well as the overall depth of their hitting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, we are going to move on. We actually, we're going to now talk about the NBA, and in particular super teams. I know you feel very strongly about this. The Warriors just went, won the NBA Finals with a super team. They had four of the top 15 or 20 players in the NBA. LeBron James obviously kind of started this with the Miami Heat. Mike, what is your general opinion of super teams in the NBA? Not just in the NBA, maybe in sports. I just think super teams might be ruining it a little bit because you know who's going to be on top of the league and kind of ruins the playoffs kind of in a way. Because you know the same two teams that make the finals, like the Cavs and Warriors, everyone expected it. We weren't expecting like the Bucks or the, the Jazz to come out of nowhere and win. But, so I think it's, if, they, if the team's more balanced, I think it'd be more exciting. Right, I, I think, I, I understand what you're saying in terms of how it's the playoffs are boring, the same teams play in the finals, the NBA playoffs aren't exciting compared to say the NHL playoffs where you literally don't know who's going to win. I, I don't have a problem with it necessarily though. I mean, you have all this new money in the NBA. You have to remember this TV deal. I think it's like $24 billion over nine years. So the salary cap went from here to here in the span of just one year. So obviously Kevin Durant was able to do that. I just don't necessarily have a problem with that. Guys want to win. That's kind of the main thing now in the NBA in the last few years. Guys sort of teaming up, if you will, with their friends and fellow superstars. So honestly, I don't have a, a real problem with that. I want to get to the phone lines here. Addison in Montclair. Addison, what do you have to say? Thanks for taking my call, guys. So I know you're talking about super teams right now, and obviously the main issue is the competitive balance of the league, Cavs Warriors past three years. But with revenue going up, rate, TV ratings going up for the NBA, I mean, how, how do you think they should fix the solution and make the league more competitive while also maintaining the high ratings and revenue? That's a good question. You want to go first? I guess they could maybe lower the salary cap because, like, Durant got found a way to get in, so maybe if they lower the salary cap, it'd be better. Yeah, I don't know about lowering the salary cap, but I remember uh, two years ago the NBA cap went from about 70 to 94 million in the span of one year, and they had talked about smoothing the cap from like 70 to something like 75 or 80 over a span of like five years. So I think that would have been a more realistic solution, but at this point it's just going to be hard. You kind of let the horse out of the barn, if you will, last year. So I don't know if you're going to be able to find that balance, but obviously viewers aren't complaining. I think the finals had record numbers for some of the games this year. So I don't think it's necessarily going to be a problem. Unfortunately, the competitive balance does kind of go in the tank because unless something crazy happens next year, I think the Warriors and Cavs are going to play again. But I don't necessarily see how they're going to balance that, although that's hasn't really been an issue for them yet. All right, we've got Chris and Montclair. Chris. Kind of going off of that, as you said, uh, the Cavs and the Warriors are probably going to be in the finals again next year. That makes the whole regular season and the playoffs up to the finals an absolute wash. Kind of going off of what Addison said, is there any way to sort of make it more balanced and make it so that the regular season and the NBA uh, playoffs up to the finals are more competitive and entertaining? Um, I just think that other teams and GMs have to find a way to do that. I mean, the Timberwolves found uh, trying to create their own secret team by acquiring Jimmy Butler. The Thunder getting Paul George, Chris Paul into the Rockets. So GMs are obviously trying to make it more balanced, but it's still going to be tough. So I think the trade deadline and other important events may try to change the landscape. Yeah, and I think that's going to be difficult in terms of next year, where you're talking more like 2020, 2020, 2021, 
where you have teams like the Celtics who are kind of playing the long game, who still have a ton of assets. A team like the Timberwolves is getting better and better. Even a team like the Denver Nuggets, the Milwaukee Bucks are going to have Giannis Antetokounmpo for another three or four years, I think. So you have more teams playing the long game. I think in three years, the NBA is going to be very interesting as you see LeBron decline. The Warriors are going to be very expensive to keep together. I don't know if they're going to do that or not, but it'll be interesting to see, I think, three years from now, if we're still having this discussion. And if we are, then I think we have a real serious competitive balance problem. So uh, thank you for the, to the callers. Thanks to Mike for joining me. That's going to do it from here. I am Jimmy Sullivan saying so long and good night.